episode 74 of The Beard Caster. My name is Scott Sakura, and I am The Beard Caster. Welcome to a podcast all about beards, mustaches, and the bearded culture with all the fun stuff that goes along with it. It's about the facial hair lifestyle we live from our daily lives and the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Beardcaster Podcast. Like I said, my name is Scott Sikora. You can find out more information about myself and the show by going to thebeardcaster.com. So many great things there. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can also uh, stream it there if you want. You can get linked to all my social media there. You can go to my email, which is scott at thebeardcaster.com. You can send me an email if you feel so inclined to talk to me. Say, hey, what's up? Or, you know what? Your podcast really sucks. Uh, I like the other one. I don't know what other one that would be. But, hey, you can just send me an email about whatever you want and, you know, whatever. So, that's it. Uh, today's episode I'm really excited about. I had a really great sit down with a guy named Kenny Parbell, who is the president of the Ohio chapter of the Bearded Sinners, as well as the sergeant at arms for the national chapter. And him and I got together a few weeks ago and uh, got together and we got together in case anyone didn't know that we got together because I, I like saying that a lot for some odd reason. But uh, we got together and we talked about uh, the pig. They're having a, a pig roast fundraiser. Uh, on on Labor Day weekend, and so we started talking about that a little bit. But we also talked about how they organized the uh, uh, the Bearded Centers Club and how that all got going and everything. But the funny part was, is we both started our beard competition style journey at the same exact event. So we talk about that, and it was really funny because I went back and looked at pictures, and well, lo and behold, there Kenny was. So we had a really fun time, and I hope you really enjoy it. There's lots of really fun information in here, and they they do such great things for their community. They are an outstanding club, so make sure you listen and hear about all the really cool stuff they do. So before we get into that, I got a couple really cool things that I got to share with you. And uh, the first one is, if you have one of those those little Amazon things in your house that you go, hey, blah, 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 and then she answers back, uh, she just started doing something really cool the other day at my house. So I want to share this with you, and you can do this at your house too, and it's really fun. So here we go. Alexa, play the Beard Caster podcast. Getting the latest episode of Beard Caster. Here it is from iHeartRadio. Episode 73 of the Beard Caster. This is my amazing. name is Scott Sakura, and I am the, the Beard Caster. Alexa, stop. Now, that's really cool. Now, so if you're just at home and you're sitting around and you feel so inclined to listen to the Beardcaster, you can just go to Alexa and ask her. Alexa. Off. So, yeah, she was making weird sounds. So, but uh, yeah, so check out uh, that little thing when you get a chance. If not, then, you know, you don't have to. I'm working on one for the Google one, too, so... Uh, that one should be pretty cool. But uh, okay, so now my second thing is, okay, cue the music, cue the music. It's giveaway time. Awesome. So I'm getting ready to give away a prize pack to someone who signed up on by going to thebeardcaster.com slash win. That's where you got to go. And uh, one random winner is going to receive a really cool prize pack. So the way I do it is I pick a number between 150 and there we go. So let's uh, let's ask Alexa for some help. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 150. Your random number between 1 and 150 is 72. 72. That's my favorite number of all time. That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you, Alexa. Hey, Alexa, how you doing today, by the way? I'm grilly hood. Oops, I meant to say really good. Guess I've been saying too many tongue twisters. I guess you have. Hey, Alexa, why don't you... Why don't you tell us a tongue twister? Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. But all right. So anyways, the winner is Randy Forsman. All right. So I have your email address. I will be sending you a email letting you know that you've won. You can email me back and you can send me your address and I will send you a really cool care package. Compliments of the Beardcaster. 
and I hope you enjoy. So, but remember, if anyone wants to be entered for all of these competitions or sorry, contests, they just got to go to thebeardcaster.com slash win to sign up and you get on my mailing list and you will get every episode delivered right to your email when they come out. So enjoy and take advantage of that because at some point you might win something really cool from me. So, but uh, let's get right into this episode uh, before we, you know, lose too many people here. We want, we want to get them to listen to Kenny now. So, all right. So let's, let's listen to Kenny right now and uh, I'll talk to you on the backside and action. A biscuit, a box of biscuits, a biscuit mixer, a box of biscuit mixers. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, a mixed box. See, you fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good at that. I've, I've practiced so hard to make sure I get that right. Okay, so I'm sitting here in Ravina, Ohio with... Um, now, this is probably one of the best guests I've ever gotten. Now, if anyone is familiar with technology, this is the man you need to know. If anyone's familiar with the newest games in town, this is the man to know. Is, th- is this true? I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to introduce you as the inventor of Fortnite, but that that's not you. <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. You got the wrong guy. All right, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> My name is Kenny Parbell. I live in Ravenna, and I'm the president of the Ohio chapter bearded centers. Okay. The Ohio chapter of bearded centers. Now you and I met a few, well, I don't know, weeks ago. It was a few weeks ago, I guess, but I want to almost say that I think we've maybe have met in the past, but who knows? Uh, but yeah, I met you at a competition in Rome, Ohio at the Morgan Rose volunteer fire department pig or ox roast, uh, with the beards of the old Northwest rock Creek chapter. But anyways, I met I met you there, and uh, I I was watching you. You were doing the pizza eating contest, right? Yeah. yeah. How'd you do in that? I did terrible. It was um, I got a piece of like a center cut. It was a sheet pizza, so it was just straight cheese. Oh. So I tried to wolf this thing down. I'm a big guy, so I was I had the faith that I was going to smash these other guys, and I got this huge lump of cheese in the back of my throat, and I thought I was going to die. I was over there choking, <laughs> but I don't want to tell nobody that I was going to die eating these pizza <laughs> so i didn't do too well on that <laughs> all right so anyways but we 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 met each other we talked for a little bit and uh you were telling me about you guys were having an event coming up in uh september over was it labor day weekend yes sir and uh as we started talking i realized to myself that okay now you are in a whole different realm and a whole different s- scene of beard clubs that as like I was telling you earlier that I never even knew existed. Like we literally live maybe 20 miles from each other and you've been doing your thing for the past, what, five years since 2012. Oh, so that's when we formed up 18 years or so. But I mean, you've been doing this forever and I had no, I mean, and I've been doing the competitive side and didn't realize that there was a whole nother world going on literally miles down the road for me and we've never really intersected at events before that i can think of i'm trying to think of the i think there's been a few events where i've see, seen the bearded center stuff mm-hmm. um on jackets and stuff like that but i never talked to anyone but why don't you explain to me so i get because like i said we were talking earlier before this all started and i'm like dude Kenny, you got to stop. I'm like, I don't want to know anything more. I want, I'm like, I want to learn just as much as everyone that's going to be listening to this is learning about, you know, what we're going to be talking about. So, but basically what it boils down to is your guys is your guys' club is pretty much a non-competitive style club. You guys are just more into doing the, the charity stuff and the brotherhood stuff and stuff like that. But why don't we go back to the beginning of like how you got involved in the, this club and you know just I, I guess we'll just start from there well randomly uh it was said 2012 when we first formed up and i want to say it was the beards of the old northwest first beard competition in rocky river maybe 
Rocky Road. Does that ring a bell? No, I don't. Well, I don't remember one there. The first one I remember we had was at this place called Whiskers. Yeah, Whiskers. Oh yeah, that was yeah, yeah that was on the west side. Okay, yeah. Okay, that, that was my first competition I ever went to. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holy it, cow! I might even have pictures of you. Then. You probably do. Oh wow! What a small <laughs> world. Um, it's funny. I started growing the beard out because I worked in a freezer warehouse at the time. So it was nicer than having to wear a mask. And boy, your chin got cold. Right. It sure did. So I just randomly grew a beard just because I didn't care. Didn't need to do anything with it. Grew a beard out. Um, but randomly, a few other of my buddies were also just growing beards just for fun. And this guy I worked with, he had a giant, like, three-foot goatee, kind of similar to yours. Um, but he was like, hey, there's this beard competition. You want to check this out? I was like, sure, let's go, man. So we went up there. We had a blast. And while we were there, I invited my other buddies up to come up, too. And he was telling me about this thing called the Bearded Sinners. And it was this guy, he originated in California. Yes, this is good because I want to know what this is about, too. Because I've, I've, I did not realize it was a national club. Yeah. Okay, now see, this is all... And the and thing is, is in, even in our circles, we don't really talk about them, nor do we really hear too much about them. So this is really good for me because I'm, I've always... You know what, this, this is just exciting for me to learn all about this. <laughs> So because I thought I knew a lot, but I guess I don't. I'm stupid. <laughs> You're not stupid. I am too. Shut up and talk. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this guy in California, he started up, and originally he had these 300 bylaws and rules and regulations, and it was set up more like an MC-type uh, deal, type club, Bearded Center's Beard Club. Um, they had, he had I don't know how he got it, but he got support from uh, a bunch of different other states, and he had even – a chapter in Australia and a chapter in England. Oh wow! But it was more uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, driven. But he was trying to make it something more mainstream. I don't know if he had like some dreams of this MC lifestyle, but through a beard club or whatever. For whatever reason, something happened with this guy, and he ended up freaking out, getting in a lot of trouble. I already beat his old lady up or something crazy. Ended up in jail. So this guy in Georgia ended up taking it over and continued on with his vision of what he wanted the club to be and we simplified it down to eight bylaws simple stuff you got to have a beard uh, support <laughs> yeah crazy right oh i okay continue on but i have some <laughs> questions okay okay so simplified it and uh we you know kicked out some more of the people that weren't really doing anything there was chapters in like colorado that nobody had heard from anybody out of there and it was all just basically off of Facebook. Mm-hmm. So there was nothing solid going on at this point. It was like a social media club exactly. instead of like a social, a true social club. Exactly. So it got a little more intimate, I guess you'd say. Ooh. And the fact, don't get excited now. <laughs> Not that kind of intimate. Are you guys wearing lingerie? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, everybody that was on active on the Facebook and talking and had the same ideas and goals, we we formed the basics of what it is today which is help your community support everything local do good change the stereotype of being big burly tattooed bearded guys Mm -hmm. uh that cuss and drink and smoke uh you know we still wanted to maintain that we're there's still good people out there yeah no i get that too because i mean that seems to be a lot of this and and this is something i've talked about many times is there is such a stigma behind the way we look and the way people perceive us and why you know we feel blacklisted sometimes and how we feel kind of pushed off and and people don't take us seriously especially when you're trying to approach a a corporation yeah. or a someone that you're trying to help out like you know say for instance united way or something you know a bunch of guys like us walk in the door we're like hey we want to raise money for you and they're thinking you're coming in there to rob them right you know Okay, now you said one of your bylaws is uh, having a beard. So, is it just strictly a men's club then? Uh, it's kind of it's kind of debatable now because we've we've obviously you know changed a lot and have adapted a lot. Um, we also got into not just as far as women go. We we typically we haven't let women in because we stick to you must have a beard. Mm-hmm. But I understand there's women out there with beard with legitimate beards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if they wanted to participate, we can't really say no to them for that no but we haven't had to cross that bridge yet all right yeah because i mean we do know a few girls out there that that have some really actually really nice beards which we've come across in the past at competitions and stuff like that rose but uh yeah i mean i mean are are your guys's significant others interested in this i mean do they 
do they come to meetings or is it just strictly, hey, it's the guys' night out kind of thing. We're going to talk about what we're going to be doing. When you guys are doing events, are your spouses or girlfriends involved in all that stuff? Yeah, uh, typically, you know, it's it, it originated as a mid, just straight up men's club for us to get away, do our thing, be men, drink beer, have beers, you know, hoo rah hoo rah. But you know, it's evolved more into family. Um, we don't, like I said, we don't have members that are female, but our families all support us. And uh, you know, come events, you know, pig roast coming up, we got all of our old ladies are going to make beans, a, you know, side a side dish, potato salad, right? So. Um, Pasta salad. <laughs> whatever it may be, just keep our bellies full for us. Most just going with the traditional uh, <laughs> yeah, picnicking things right. you might eat at a, at a pig roast or whatever. Yeah, so they're supportive of us. Uh, they pretty much, I think they like us out of their hair anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. <clears throat> but meetings, it, in meetings, they will, sh- you know, sometimes they'll go to meetings and just do their own thing, just hang out. And they offer up ideas and too and stuff, so we don't shun them away from us or tell them they got to get out of the room while we're talking about our man you stuff get, man, you guys sound real progressive <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's really cool now so how, how many do you know like how many clubs there are nationwide or worldwide of the, the bearded centers like i mean do you do you communicate with other clubs or is or is there like one like and and just to kind of take a step back to like mm-hmm. how we were talking earlier and I had to stop the conversation because we were talking about how, from my perspective, I'm like, you know, I'm involved in beard clubs and the competitive bearding and all that stuff. Then I find out that there's another beard club in the same town as us pretty much in the same area. They have tons of guys in the club, beards. I mean, but we never see them at competition. So we find out that they're like a totally different type of club than ours. But then there's also that under looming other club that's all over the country and the world too, the bearded villains. And no one seems to talk about them either, but you know, they have such a extremely huge online presence and you know, I know they're doing things out there just like you guys are, but it doesn't show up like in my news feeds and stuff like that. And it's like, I didn't realize honestly until I met you how big the beard culture is i mean i was just hey man it's us in our clubs and i know all these cool people and everything but then i'm finding out now that there's all these other big clubs big organizations out there that are doing the similar things that we are but they're just not competing they're not using their beards as a competitive thing they're just using them as a hey well this is our common thing you know we're going to get together this is our common thread and we're going to do good and stuff like that now, like I said earlier, you know, you have, I mean, any idea how many clubs there are, like the centers there um, are? I, I mean, mean, I could I could look it up and give you an exact accurate count. Let's just say 38. No, we're not that big. Oh, uh, 37. I'd say we're probably around 35. 15. Oh, I was way off. I was doubling <laughs> it. <laughs> I would say 15 nationally now. Oh, um, okay. But we are strict on the startup of new chapters we require new chapters to um make an initial donation and i mean donation as in a donation to a charity okay they have to show the effort they have to have at least five people interested and on board they have to set up a hierarchy a, a tier you know president vice president yeah. treasurer all that they, so they have to show that they're organized they have to show that they're about it they have to do initial donation um, that way we know they're serious. It's not just random people. It's not just a Facebook club anymore. It's not just yeah. an Instagram club anymore. Now, who? Now, when you when you said you guys came up with these these new by or the new membership, we'll call them membership rules or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, now, was this something that you strictly as the Ohio chapter did, or was this something that? between the 15 clubs you guys decided that this was going to be the new way to do it it was a national decision we actually we have a national committee i'm actually part of the, one of five of the national committee i'm sergeant at arms oh my lord um so i didn't realize i was with such royalty here tonight <laughs> right oh my goodness man you're in for a treat then well, i am <laughs> but uh this is quite interesting <laughs> this is going to be a real great learning experience for me and the listeners because like i said this is we're getting into a whole realm of shit that I've had no idea was out there. I mean, and it's always been there. Well, not always, but for all the years that I've been involved in clubs and stuff like that, I would have never known. 
we, guys, like, like I said, we stealth ninjas. <laughs> we have a, a a national committee, and that basically it's a democracy. There's no one person has more power than anybody. Um, we've gone through a lot of changes. We've been through three national presidents so far. Were they murdered? On. No. Oh well, the first guy might be the guy I was talking about. In, Oh, uh, yeah, him. California, he might have got murdered. Oh, okay. We don't know, though. Usually people from California are weird anyways. They are all pretty weird. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, you know, as a, as a group, we decided on these national rules, and we've had to make amendments as things come up. Um, but, you know, we do it as a whole, and that way we keep unity within the brotherhood. It's not you don't have all these rogue chapters out there doing things that might misinterpret you know, our national appearance or what we do on things. Cause we've had bad apples like flipping cars and burning them. Right. That's not, that's not right. a healthy way to get your beard club. No good publicity. Not at all. <laughs> so, and I mean, we've had people that were, um, we had an Oklahoma chapter who was a lot of people were affiliated with, uh, the MCs and we started getting to issues with colors out there with the, what is MCs motorcycle clubs? Oh, okay. You said that earlier, and I yeah. was trying to figure out what... I was thinking, like, you meant MCs, like, they were like... <laughs> Not the DJs. Okay, that's we what had, I was we like. They were the trying DJs to start, or... start bands. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, motorcycle clubs. All right. Uh, so motorcycle... I don't know if you guys have ever had to deal with anything with mm. motorcycle clubs up there. No. Um, we have, we've had issues, not in Ohio, but other states have had issues where it comes down to colors, you know... And you wear you're wearing the wrong colors. You will get approached by members of motorcycle clubs, and they'll tell you that's that's like not acceptable. Gang shit. Yeah. So that's where when the, when the club moved to Georgia, they were affiliated with Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Oh. And we ran into a lot of problems because they were trying to like switch to like make more rules because they're saying you can't have this color touching this color, or else it might be it might look like you're affiliated with such and such motorcycle club. And wow. it would actually cause issues. Holy crap. And we had chapters fall out because of that. That Oklahoma chapter, there's a big motorcycle club present out there, presence out there. Wow. Yeah. So that's why we set up this national committee to keep everything in line, that we're all on the same page. And, you know, it's there's a certain requirement to be a part of us. It's not just a, hey, uh, we got a dude, me and my buddy are now bearded centers of Alabama you know, and they're just doing their own thing. We hold them accountable. Wow, you're blowing my mind, Tim. <laughs> well, this is this is really cool. I mean, I you're you're really getting me to think about things that I've really never thought about when it comes to like you know I would have never thought that there would have been issues with club like beard clubs and biker clubs. You know, but I mean, I guess we've been lucky where we've. You know, we've done events or we've done uh, gatherings or stuff like that where we haven't had any run-ins with those type of people or, uh, you know, situations like that. So, I mean, that that kind of sucks for you guys. Well, not you particularly, but the guys in the club down there. But, I got, yeah, I can see that happening. I mean, it's, you know, people are different in different areas and clubs are have different agendas and all that stuff so i mean that's really cool that you guys are you know really sat down and and ironed out some good rules and some good guidelines and stuff to to uh so what it was so what if someone wants to join how does that all work like um as far as just a regular like if you were to regular like say right now let's go what what do i want to become a bearded sinner what do what do i got to do do i have to cut a finger off or something no we don't do nothing that crazy we might haze you a little bit here and there um no physical harm uh but basically um our members we we call them black shirts uh you can wear black shirts with the red i got tons of black with the red lettering okay you know as far as bearded centers gear okay um anybody coming on is we call them red shirts you're not allowed to wear the black black is basically showing that you're the member all right you are a member rather Red shirts and our supporters can wear any other color with the logos, but we don't sell black shirts to anybody that's a non-member. Oh, that's interesting. So we call it red shirts if you're just jumping on. Different chapters have different names. They call them the FNGs or whoever. But basically, it's the same thing as I was explaining with uh, chapter startup. You have to prove that you're in it for the right reasons. You don't want to just do it to to feel cool and to wear a cool shirt. 
Yeah. You know, you got to attend. In Ohio, we set it as there's no specific time limit you need to be involved before you become a member. But you come to meetings. We meet every three weeks. Show up at meetings. Offer some offer some advice if you can help out with something. If you're a, a carpenter and we need something done, that event coming up that could use the help from a carpenter. Mm-hmm. You know, offer your assistance with this or whatever your trade might be or just random knowledge or random uh, things you have that you could offer to the club and just help out. And um, once you start doing that, you you start attending meetings and uh, events and you start, you know, just kicking ass and just doing what, what we do. One of the members will say, hey, we need to get this guy in here. You know what I mean? He's ready. Mm-hmm. So we'll do a vote, vote the person in. That's cool. And then you have, like, a big party for him? Eh, not really. He gets his, he gets his honorary black shirt then? <laughs> yes, correct. Right. Cool. But um, at that point, uh, we just do we do $20 a month dues. That's good. And if you get behind, you know, we are, we're all working class dudes. So if you get behind, we're pretty accept, acceptable, acceptive of that. Acceptance. acceptance. We have acceptance, yeah. We have a accept, acceptance. Why can I not say that word? We, um, we'll just skip over that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, no, we're trying to think of the right word. You yeah. guys are lenient. We are understanding. How okay, about that? there we go. Ah, that's that. We that are, word looks good. <laughs> we are understanding that, you know, family, work life always come first, and we don't expect anybody to miss out on any of that yeah. for the club. So, you know, if you get behind a couple months on your dues, it's acceptable. But we, hit, we pass a limit. If you get over like $100 behind, we put you on a probation. Then word. you cut a finger off. Yeah. Well, we didn't want to speak about that. In okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not serious. I'm just. I'm just kidding, everyone. Just trying to have fun. God, <laughs> we have to be such a buzzkill, man. Sometimes cutting fingers off is fun. I wouldn't know. But we well, uh, have so many. We're only five years deep, and I got all mine still. So. Well, I, well you're good. the president. You would have to have all your fingers. Maybe you don't have your toes. I can't tell. <laughs> Start with the toes first, right. then go to the fingers. So tell me, okay, so we're, we're okay. Now I'm an official member in in this pretend world we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Now, what do I have to look forward to? What do we do? What is what do we do for the community? What, I mean, what is it we do? I'll give you an example. Um, right now, uh, about a month ago, I got called one of my. Well, is that really right now, or was it a month ago? Well, I'm just using that as an example oh. in this pretend world. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So I got a call from one of my good personal friends in life, not affiliated with the Beard Club. His niece had a stroke. Mm. She's seven years old. It was two days before her birthday. She lives in North Carolina. She was up in Cleveland at the zoo, Cleveland Zoo with their grandparents who live out in Portage County here. Had a stroke while they're at the zoo. So she's stranded, eight years old. Insurance companies giving a lot of problems, yeah. Because to fly somebody back to North Carolina, that's that's a hefty bill. Yeah, especially when they're incapacitated. Right. She's completely uh, paralyzed on her one side. She's completely immobile, and obviously freaking out. You're a seven year old. You can't use left side of your body. Yeah. So he calls me. He's like, I don't know what else to do. You know, they had a couple things worked out, but he's like, I feel like we need to do something. And I told him, I was like send me a little bit of information on what exactly happened and I'll make it happen. So we threw together this event in literally a week. Mm-hmm. I had a venue, uh, which is city park here in Ravenna. Uh, they're letting us use a pavilion. I have multiple people donating different foods to be cooked up. We're throwing her a cookout and we have so much help from across the, the Facebook community and the Instagram community, people donating. We're going to do a giant Chinese, uh, raffle mm-hmm. and, um, 50 50 you know your normal things yeah we'll have an entry five bucks to get in for all you can eat and basically everything we do is going to them wow directly to the family so like that's just a spur of the moment type thing oh that's really cool yeah i mean i I mean that is very similar to what we do but you guys are just you guys are doing it without the celebration of facial hair which is i mean what we, we we do the same things but we also make it a celebration of facial hair and make it a contest and stuff. Right. I guess that's how we justify like getting together too and like making it more of a fun thing for us. But mm. I mean, I do like that though, that it's like, yeah, you guys can get together and do, if you want, you can do four five, six like events like that in a year in your neighborhood or your area. 
and you know you're just doing good for your community and stuff whereas we'll go to like east coast west coast down south up north you know we'll 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 spread the wealth all across the country and mm-hmm. stuff like that which is good too but you know you guys are really very local community focused right and you know like you said a friend of yours you know you know you're you're always looking out for your your family and your friends too which is very admirable yeah we um and, you know we do certain annual things uh you mentioned briefly mentioned pig roast that's yeah, one we'll, of our we'll talk about we'll get that to that bit. um but then you know thanksgiving we always eat do turkey <laughs> that too and stuffing <laughs> but we Green always beans. sponsor a family pie. or three Ooh. uh i think we did three was the, the most we did the one time now, and when you sponsor a family, what does that mean? That means we either give them a gift card to Giant Eagle or something like that. Say, here's your here's your dinner on us. Oh, okay. Or we'll bring you a giant box of food and a turkey and pies, and we'll drop it off your doorstep on Thanksgiving. Wow. Like, here you go. Do you dress as a turkey? No. Shit, that would make it great. <laughs> okay, this year, I'm going to come with you, and you're going to dress like a turkey. See, that's what, we, that's what we need to do. Maybe that's why we're not getting any notoriety, because we're just kind of like... We're doing the right thing. You're but not we're a not. bunch of turkeys. That's right. why. <laughs> now, Christmas time, you know, we'll throw a Santa hat on. We do well, this. I was looking at your tattoos right yeah. here. Because on one arm you have naughty, the other one you have nice. I do have the naughty and nice tattoos. So I'm, I'm assuming you know something about the Santa Claus, right? Ironically, I just got that because uh, there's a movie called The Guardians. Of the Galaxy. Yes, no, I've seen no, that. No, 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 no. Oh. Guardians. It's a kid's movie. Where it's all of the fictional holiday characters, it's the Easter Bunny, uh, it's Santa Claus. Who else? I can't even think of my Tooth Fairy. Uh, Tasmanian Tooth, Tooth Devil. Fairy might be in there, but they're all like badasses. Mm-hmm. And Santa Claus is like the ringleader of the good guys, and he's got naughty and nice tattoos. Well, on his why wouldn't he be? Right. So <laughs> that's cool. So that's where those come from. My son loved it so. I said, fuck it, I'm going to get it. That's cool. They're, they're really cool. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, man, he must like really love Christmas or Santa Claus or something. <laughs> no, that's really cool. So so then in, in around Christmas then, I'm assuming you guys do you sponsor families then too? We do. And, you know, we'll do a smaller dinner, but we'll get the kids' toys. We always find a family that's got kids, obviously. That's what it's mostly about. Um, so we'll, you know, hook them up with a whole bunch of toys and deliver it to their door. Uh, the night before, or day you, before, you, you got you got some uh, got me getting some ideas stirring up in my head right now. Oh yeah, because I do every year. I do. It's the guy's taking the trash out right now, rudely as we're talking. <laughs> Real rude, sir. Uh, um, I do for the past two years, but we've done it for the past three or four years. We do a Toys for Tots toy drive every year, and. Uh, We'll get together the Cleveland chapter, the Beards of the Old Northwest. We'll get the Youngstown Club, uh, Rust Belt Whisker Society, and the Pittsburgh, the Steel City Beard and Mustache Club. And we all congregate in Boardman, Ohio, and we do bowling, and we do a Toys for Tots drive, and we, okay. get, we collect all these toys. But the past couple of years, I've been going off on my own and setting off my own specific night before and collecting toys, and... Each year I've been doing it, I keep collecting. It's ridiculous. I can't believe how generous the people of Chardon, Ohio are. I mean, ridiculous amounts of toys. Like, my car was, like, filled to the brim this year. Mm. And But maybe we should talk and uh, somehow figure out we can collaborate on something there. Because I think this could be a really good, uh, uh, a, a good Christmas for some family. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it, we actually last year we collaborated with a couple other organizations. Was it the uh, garbage can moving organization <laughs> of Ohio? <laughs> it was not. He's like, mm, I wonder how much louder I can get this thing. <laughs> it's it's empty now, so it does seem louder now that it's empty. Oh yeah, it doesn't have as more much acoustics. garbage in it. <laughs> okay, before we were rudely er- interrupted, <laughs> continue on, Kenneth. Uh, we worked with this lady out of she's on the outside of Ravenna in this little town called Brady Lake and she's affiliated with a uh, Methodist church over there okay but we share similar interests in helping people so we, we've worked alongside of churches which is hilarious to see in person because we're all yeah. you know, bearded sinners wearing black and red big beards 
big ugly tattooed guys working with these little old church ladies. And they, I think Jesus wore black and red though too. Did he? At some point. Had At have, some point, I'm sure he did. Right. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, they do a toy giveaway for our county residents here, and she she gets a whole, like you said, just a ton of toys donated. Mm-hmm. And she'll bring the whole community in, and everybody can go through and get X amount of toys based off of... Uh, they, they collaborate with other... Uh, organizations that do toy drives that way there's not a bunch of people double yeah. dipping and whatnot but she asked us to help out and we obliged last year and we brought we had clothing donations uh we've been we stockpile oh. anybody who's like hey i got a bag of clothes donate i'm like don't take it to goodwill don't take it to salvation army yeah. bring it to me we'll get it to people you know yeah. no charge it's going right to the people yeah because you know sometimes i always wonder like when you go and drop that bag of clothes off it at some place does it really get to who you're trying to get it to it's more satisfying when you know you're going to hand that bag over to someone who needs it. Absolutely, and we learned that lesson because we've done uh, Salvation Army. They they sell it, but they sell it they sell it cheap, but they're still making profits off it. Um, Goodwill obviously is making profits. Yeah. Um, is that really Goodwill though? I, I don't know. The Goodwill is bizarre to me. I mean, I feel like just a place you can go dump your garbage now. Where yeah, and you get a coupon, you can go buy other people's garbage if you want. So I can see where some people might want to do it can't keep my old lady out of there looking at <laughs> furniture and whatnot <laughs> hey sometimes there's good stuff there that's what she says okay, uh, that is what she says but- <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh jeez, i've been waiting now uh, this whole time to get, throw that one in there but you beat me to it so um so we helped them out last year it was it was a pretty big event we also have this guy out here called the bike doctor who um he, he worked at a scrapyard i'm gonna guess he works on bikes he does how did you know? I didn't even get into the story. I know. Yet. It's not like he was a car doctor or <laughs> truck doctor or moped doctor. Oh, is it a pedal bike or a motorbike? <laughs> pedal bike. Oh, see? There. I... So what happened is this guy, he worked at a scrapyard, and he built one of his kids a bicycle. They couldn't afford to buy a new bike, so he built him a bicycle. Well, then he built another bicycle for the neighbor kid, mm-hmm. and then he built another bicycle for the other neighbor kid. So... He's basically building, he would get donations of bicycles and just put new tubes in them, new chains on them, fix them up, make sure everything's ready to go, give them away to kids. Oh, cool. He's he's blowing up now. He's insane right now. Oh, really? He's working his, his body he's to the bone. He's putting like five wheels on bikes now? That insane? No, like, I'm just saying as far as working-wise, putting stuff together, like oh. putting bikes together. They have a 53-foot trailer filled with broken bikes that's been donated that they just... Just go in and take pieces off and build new yeah. bikes. That's cool. And he gives them away to kids. Anybody needs a bike? You want a bike? You got me a bike. I was like, hey, man, I'm 350 pounds. I said, you got a fat guy bike? Break a bike. He said, I got the perfect bike for you, man. It's this big rock climber bike. and It's got, the, like, the big wheels on it and yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's got, it's got its regular wheels on oh. it, but... It's shocks and yeah. everything. We need shocks. <laughs> it makes it for a smoother ride. Right. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing, too, that a lot of people don't realize is the people we get connected with. Yeah. You know, if I was some Joe Schmo who didn't have a beard, if I was just a bald faced mortal, like most of the public out there, (laughs) you know, Hey, what are the chances of me running across this, you know, bike doctor guy, you know, you know, there's something about the community that just kind of puts us, it's, we, it's like a cosmic connection that we have. And I'm really starting to feel that, like especially like meeting with you tonight, hearing your stories. But I think a lot of what we do is a cosmic connection where we are kind of like knights in shining armor to like certain people or certain organizations that were these guys that come in that they're not expecting to do anything because they have these preconceived notions about how people look and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, we end up doing way more than they ever expected and they're always extremely thankful and very grateful for all the effort that we put into all this stuff that we do and it makes like i was even telling you it makes lifelong bonds it's it's like it's like each new person that i meet through this whole venture of the podcast and the club stuff it's like i literally gain a new best friend that you know i'll go out of my way to do whatever for to help them on their journey to greatness so 
That's what I really am starting to realize that I think that this whole bearding community is just a, it's a cosmic adventure for us. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> It was like I didn't know where to go. It was like I was, I was. I you was, had something good going, I and you just rolling. had to have an ending. I know. Where, where I was like, shit. I'm like, oh, this is going so great. And then I was like, ah. Uh, and it was like that bike, and you just like stop, and you're like trying to balance it. And then I didn't want to put my feet down, but then finally I was like, shit, I had to. So, but yeah. We okay, made, so we made it through that awkward moment. Let's uh, let's talk about this pig roast that's coming up. Yeah, pig roast. This is our fifth year. Fifth annual pig roast. Now that once again, another thing that stunned me that you guys are doing this event for five years, and I live right down the road, and I had never heard of this, never seen. It's like, but yet we're friends on Facebook. I know we've been friends on Facebook. I know I'm a, friends with a bunch of the the sinners mm. on Facebook, but I've not seen any of these events. Are you guys like? Do you guys use Facebook heavily to promote stuff? Some of us do, and, and that comes down. That's what it comes down to is. You know, we have a lot of people that will share it, but we have people that are secluded and they don't have many friends on their friends list. They're not, yeah. you know, we're all, we all keep to ourselves for the most part. We have a few guys that are super outgoing and that's where, you know, the beard competition, you've seen the, yeah. the center stuff coming around. That's just because of the select few guys that actually are taking oh, that nice. extra initiative to go out and reach out to other people and other clubs. So when it comes down to sharing stuff, we may have every, you know, in Ohio we have seven full members right now we have a couple new guys that are working their way in but you know four of them they don't have a they don't have more than 150 friends on their facebook so the, you know the facebook aspect isn't yeah getting put out there like that see now that's i i i equate that with the success that we've had in our ventures is everyone is extremely facebook pro, proficient yeah. and that <clears throat> to me has been the greatest tool for our success for all the things that we've done because it's literally how I've told people like you know if you set up an event and it says that 540 people are interested in going blah 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 you're going to get at least 80 plus percent of those people like it's ridiculous how accurate like the numbers on events are but when i was doing like concert promotions and stuff mm. if it says 540 people are going to attend i could already guarantee it was only going to be anywhere from 75 to 80 people and it was pretty darn accurate every time but with the with the bearding community it's something about the, the facebook dynamic that everyone kind of you know and the instagram too but right those are such great tools to advertise your clubs. And I mean, that's I, I, for sure, man. Like, I'm going to definitely be really looking hard for, for stuff going on with you guys because I definitely want to, I want to be, you know, involved in all the good shit you're doing. But so let's, as I tell you tonight, that I can't go to the pig roast because right. I'm in a wedding. You jerk. I know. Sorry. But yeah, I was I was so excited. I'm like, oh my god, I get to go to my first event and everything. And then I'm like, oh shit, my friend Josh, bald face Josh, is getting married. So, but yeah, we'll have a good time there. But um, and uh, and of course, this isn't going to be the last time you hear from from Kenny and and you know all these guys. But anyways, as I've been kind of going around and everything, and I'm moving my hand like in a circular motion, like a, I'm like holding the basketball, weird and shit. <laughs> but uh, okay, let's go back to the pig roast. Yeah. The fifth one, and go. All right, fifth annual pig roast. Um, reason you haven't heard of it much is the first year we did it in a buddy of mine's backyard. It was maybe forty-five to sixty people tops at once. We spent about a thousand bucks. We made about five hundred, so we lost out five hundred bucks on that. Next year we did it at this campground where we're currently doing it, at, and it's gotten bigger. It's gotten better. Uh, we keep trying to add a, another level of you know, fun to the event. It's, it's normally just a three day, um, camp out, camp out bash, drink, you know, drinking, eating, having a good time, music, the campground, uh, this is their last day of the year for camping season. So they always throw a big, uh, Halloween party the same night. Oh, that's cool. So they're doing trick or treating and stuff and they bring a DJ and they have a big dance party right next door to where we're at. So we cut our music off at say, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock 
and they have their party going on over there, so our party mingles with their party. Wow. So, you know, in the second year we really had... Really? Keep rubbing it in, man. <laughs> keep making me feel bad. Well, I mean, you're, 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 I know, I know, you're screwed I this year. I haven't anything. even got to this year's elaborate plans. Okay. So we'll each year, you know, said first year, maybe 60 to 80 people somewhere in that range showed up. Next year, maybe 100 or so. The next year, we had a great year. We pulled in a lot of money uh, for, for us. I mean, going from losing out $500 to bringing in a couple grand uh Very it was cool. fantastic and this is our only fundraiser we do selfishly that funds what us. you guys do yeah everything yeah. you know our thanksgiving giveaways our uh christmas that's very all that stuff so we have one that's big cool. fundraiser a year and that's our pig roast and mm. that's our time just to have fun with it because every like you said everything else is kind of somber and yeah to the point yeah and, sometimes it's not you know you're you're doing something not for a good reason i mean <clears throat> You're doing it for a good reason, but it's not a good situation. Like, right. you know, a young girl having a stroke at seven years old. I mean, right. that's not a good situation, but... Okay, continue. So, so yeah, so... Um, uh, we get, Last year was our fourth year. <clears throat> Honestly, if you knew if you know math, you know it was fourth year last year. Um, oh, yeah, I sometimes do. <laughs> it was a complete bust last year. Last year was terrible because I don't know if anybody else listening lives in northeast ohio that time of the year you can never guess what the weather's going to be like last labor day (laughs) was fucking miserable it was cold and rainy and it was just nasty that sounds about right or it's 95 degrees and hot as balls which that seems to be the way it's going to trend this year oh my god i hope so i really hope so I can deal with the heat because we can. We'll spray everybody down. We'll buy yeah. thousands of water balloons, and I will personally hit everybody with a water balloon that's hot. You know what I mean? You heard it here first. I will get everybody. I will do that for you. But when it's cold and rainy, nobody wants to come. Yeah, no I had right. you know friends and family. They were like, "Hey, man, I ain't coming to your shindig this year. Sorry," and I can't even blame them. So <clears throat> yeah. So last year was pretty rough. So we're hoping for everybody to not do rain dances this year and just let it be hot. And we'll deal with we'll deal with the heat. They have a swimming pool there. They have a giant lake you could swim in. Plenty of ways to keep cool. Can you fish in it too? You can fish. Oh my god! Catch and release though. That's all right. I don't Paddle like to boats, eat fish. Canoe rentals. Swimming. Slewing. What is that? Swimming. Oh, swimming. <laughs> what? They keep, you know, they're emptying trash again, I think, or something. You know, I didn't hear you properly. Yeah, slewing. You, know, you don't slewing. know about slewing? <laughs> slewing, you know. Fucking like like investigative work. Slewing. Slewing. Yeah. I thought it was like some sort of like weird like game, like kind of uh, like bocce ball. <laughs> that, that, you know, because once you, again, I'm in a whole new world of things that I didn't know existed. You have to be 60, year old, 60 years old to know what slewing is. Oh. There was maybe like you get in like a little sled or something and they push you down the water slide. <laughs> it's like the summer version of the uh, sled, the bobsled, <laughs> slewing. So, okay, so last year was a bust. So now this year I have been uh, diligently paying attention to all the stuff that's been going on. And, in fact, I was really excited to see a lot of my club members were uh, – uh, interacting with you guys and it seems like some of them are going to be coming out which makes me feel really cool and good that we're finally starting to like kind of meld the clubs and and you know definitely at some point there's going to be uh, a good uh togetherness moment with you know your guys's club and our club and i mean it's been slowly happening anyways mm-hmm. but like you said we both were at the same freaking event our first one yeah you know so little do we know that we'd be seven or five eight and 16 years later we'd be sitting at a bar in ravina ohio talking about the night we didn't meet but we were at the same place <laughs> right <laughs> well no like you said though right there um the rock rock creek guys uh beers of northwest are awesome oh they, uh, yeah I love they, them. it was it was bizarre because you know we have like you said you haven't heard about anything we do yeah for the most part and randomly we had a chili cook off at the beginning of the year and doug white and the crew came in and i was like oh my god this is awesome like this is the first time we've had anyway you know we always go to the mad viking events yeah we always you know try to hit up some of the beers of northwest events you know we try to hit everyone we can and you know even if it's one or two people um, but yeah, they come. They brought you know ten people in. They were buying our shirts. They were buying our merch. They were having a, a great time. So I was like, you know what? 
those guys are the real deal. You know, they're going to support us. We got to support them. I love that club. Like that's yeah. like those guys are like just outstanding guys. Right. I love. I just love hanging out with them, and I love doing events with them and stuff. Like we did. Uh, geez, I don't know when it was. We were we did a, a bowling event last year, and that was For the, the second Beatitude the, House. Yeah, the Beatitude House. House. Yeah. Did you go to that? Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll see. I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there for that. One. I didn't go this the one this year. Oh, see, I went to the one this year. Okay, I didn't last go to the year one was before. Yeah, that's which one. was this was their second one. Yeah. So. Okay. But yeah, no. I mean, once again, another group of guys that just have huge hearts who just want to do good for their community and stuff like that. And right. They also now, funny enough, I mean, they are a a side club of ours or they're a different chapter mm. but those guys really don't compete very much either they're they have like a straggler will come in like every now and then like like uh we had a couple guys come into uh mansfield a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and uh that was really cool to see you know them come in and everything which you know look once again it's like every so often you'll have one of their their guys appear out of nowhere but i you know i know they got you know 10 15 guys in the club and it's it's hard right and plus we kind of between myself you guys and those guys we kind of live in like odd areas that are just not close to shit right i mean but then you were talking about like going to youngstown and stuff like that and i mean like we have the rust belt whisker society though that club's down there you know and and also next weekend uh there's an event at summit county fairground which isn't that far from you guys oh, too it's perfect for us i know and i you know i'll be emceeing that one so i'm once again i'm gonna be at the same event you're gonna be at right. if you're coming which i didn't i'm i'm assuming because it's right down the street but um yeah so it's it once again the cosmic connection right yeah we're doing a triple header that day we got a meeting later on we're gonna go to uh, the lady i mentioned in brady lake village uh that we work with with the christmas ordeal She's having somebody put together an event for her to help her get some funds because she gives so much. Yeah. And she's going through a time. So we're going to go to that early. Or we're going to go to the competition first because that's like noon, right? Yeah. It's, oh, it, it starts at uh, – registration is between 12 and 2. Competition is between 2 and 4. Okay. So I don't know if we'll be able to stay for the whole thing, but we'll definitely have some people out there. Well, I can. I'm in charge, man. I'll drag it out or yeah. start it. I'll be like, everyone, okay, we're starting now. <laughs> I got the mic in my hand, right. so – I mean, it could be the boss. So that's your thing. So if I'm doing a beer competition, I'll be like, hey, Scott, you can come down here and I'm that's, I That is part of the evolving of the Beardcaster is to getting into more emceeing events. Okay. And I, I love doing it. Mm. This will be my third one this year. Um, I generally do my one every year at the Maple Festival. Yeah. And I've been doing that one kind of on and off for years, but... Um, I've done a handful over the years at different places, and I just I just enjoy it. I mean, you do well at it. It's, it's hard. It's got to be hard to do for a regular guy. I couldn't stand up there and do that. You know, when I, you were you came to me and you were talking to me, and I kind of freeze up when I'm staring at a crowd. I'm <laughs> like, oh, my name's Kenny. Uh, please don't notice that I'm sweating right now. You know what I mean? No. But you keep it rolling. You keep everybody laughing. So well, you I try. Well, it. that's what. My wife said to me, she goes, when we watch you up there, it's, you're just a nothing but a bunch of dad jokes. And I'm like, well, you know, it works. Right. I know what works, and the dad jokes always work. Speaking of which, do you know what a gay horse eats? No. Hey. <laughs> nice. That's a good dad joke right there. I'll but, be using that later. Uh, you can. That's up. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, if you... If you're doing an event or something and you need an MC, I'm I'm always available. I'm I love doing it and you know, I just that's another way I can give back to the community too, the bearding community at least that that support me and and I'm more than happy to help help you guys out with anything. And that goes to anyone who's listening to this too. I'm, you know, you can easily find out information by going to thebeardcaster.com there's a place where you can email me or scott at thebeardcaster.com if you want me to host an event i can do that i can also MC events and i can also help organize events too so keep that in your mind too i'm very good at that i've been doing that for years but uh so let's get back to the pig roast okay. i know we just kind of keep going all over the place so i know you said that you have 
some and as I was looking at the list of things that you guys were potentially wanting to do with this, you guys wanted to start adding some fun other little events to get uh, people involved. So tell tell me a little bit more about what you guys are planning. All right, this year, you know, typically our pig roasts have involved pigs, pigs first off, first and foremost, and beards. Okay, um, okay we're secondly, we get into you know we we'll have a cornhole tournament, we'll have a fifty fifty raffle, we'll have you know, live music or DJ or just music playing. There'll be sound there to fill the ambience. What if one of the musicians' names was DJ? DJ DJ? Well, I wonder if there's ever been a DJ DJ. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, continue on. <laughs> um, Dad jokes. So it's it's been simple, um, other than just hanging out with us and, you know, having a good time partying. You bring the family out during the day, and at nighttime, you know, it gets a little rowdy. Um so this year we we needed to step it up and do a couple extra things. So uh, one of our guys was talking to one of our members in New Hampshire about a previous national meeting. Oh, that's I forgot to mention that. Hey, we got you. Not you, only is you have a microphone. Not only is this our um, fifth annual pig roast, but this is also our third third annual. No, this to be the fourth. Use your the numbers. fourth national meeting where we have members from all of our other states come up here oh. for the weekend. Well, that's nice because I guess it is a long weekend. It's a holiday weekend. They can come in, you right. know, and then stay for the weekend. So that that is nice. So, yeah. So the first year we had it was when uh, our Georgia chapter was still considered the, uh, the home chapter of the centers. Mm-hmm. So we had it down in Georgia, and they had a big – like it was like a car show and then uh they did they did a whole bunch of stuff throughout the weekend so but it was everybody from around the country you know whoever could make it whoever could make it went down there and you know we had a great time so they kind of fell off the map ohio took over because we were kind of one of the the more organized chapters that's because of you partially just say yes just shut up and say yes all right you're right it's because of me (laughs) um but we started hosting the national meets where everybody would come up here mm-hmm. and it's perfect venue. You know what I mean? It's a giant campground. So yeah. people could come and camp and buy, you know, you get a cabin, stay all weekend. So it's hard to, for other chapters to put something together like that. Yeah. Um, so this is our third year doing the national meet at our pig roast, which is perfect. So it's, it's a great time for us, regardless if nobody shows up last year, I said it was a bust, but we had so many brothers come from New Hampshire, um, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, where else do they come? They come from all over. Sweden, Sweden. No, more lo- more in the United States these days. Oh, okay. So, um, so it's a great time for us just to hang out and get to know our the people we call brothers on Facebook. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, this year, talking to a guy from New Hampshire, when we went to the one in Georgia, they did a thing called the Man Games, where it was just a series of random it was a beer belly contest and gnome tossing where they were throwing this, gnomes this little guy they called him gnome down a slip and slide basically and the furthest whoever got the furthest distance was the winner was it a homunculus or a midget or just a, was a statue it was an actual person oh he wasn't really he wasn't technically a little person or a midget oh he was just a small dude <laughs> homunculus that's is what that we what call that, him. Is that yes. what that is yes but um, you know, and then there was like a strength competition where you had to hold these two en- empty kegs up by mm-hmm. your sides, arms straight out. I couldn't do that. I I couldn't either. I'm fat and out of shape. But anyways, we're like, we need to bring something like that back. So we put together this man games where it's going to be a competition similar to that, where it's going to be a, a keg toss, a three legged race, uh, DOS boot, which is, yes. you know what DOS boot Watch is? Watch out for the bubble. Right. <laughs> you got <gotta>, to <laughs> turn it at the bubble, man. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, it's a drinking competition. There's this game, uh, I forget what it's called, Nail nail Game or something? Or Stump. Stump is what it's called. But you take turns hitting this nail. You got to hit your opponent's nail into the stump. And whoever's nail sticking up at the end wins. You flip this hammer and you catch it. Wherever you catch the hammer is where you got your grip from and you have to hit a nail. So you hit your opponent's nails into the stump. Are you, are you following I guess, me? Yeah, I guess you'd have to be there. I, 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 I kind of am. So you're flipping your hammer and trying to hit your opponent's you have nails a team. in? Yeah, you got a hammer. You have to flip it. If you flip it twice, you get two hits. If you flip it once, you get one hit. 
and you're trying to knock all of your opponent's nails into this stump. Okay. If you're the last one with a nail left, you're the winner. Okay. I can, I can, I'm done with that. Okay. Um, you know, just different stuff like that. So we'll have, there's like six events. I can't remember what they are off, offhand, but it's man games. And then we'll have trophies for the winners of the man games. And it's a blast. You know, it's a competition. You get a bunch of men together. They're all drinking. Everybody loves competing. Yeah. So we have that. And now we're throwing out the idea of doing a small beard competition. I did see that, and I was surprised about that. And, I, I mean, that's would this be your first one that you guys have actually tried to put together? Yes. I've been wanting, Are you nervous? I'm nervous. I've been, I've been wanting to set up an actual beard competition event for some years now, but it hasn't really lined up with us. Yeah. So, you know, somebody asked from, you know, I might have been one of the Northwest guys. Yeah. Asked about, is there going to be a beard competition? And me and uh, Billy, who... Uh, is the national president right now, Billy Breaker, talked about it. And we're like, you want to do a beard competition? These people are asking about it. And I'm like, well, we got cornhole tournament. We have the man games. We have a lot of stuff going on, the raffles. We have a best and worst tattoo competition. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on throughout the day. Yeah. And it's it's hard to fill anything in. But I was like, if we do something small, we might be able to fill it in and, and actually do it. You know, if it'll bring more people in, we'll make it fucking happen. Yeah, I mean, even if you only do, like, a four or five categories, I mean, most of you guys are, like, bearded guys, and, I mean, you don't have straight mustache guys, do you, in no. the club? Yeah, see? No. So, I mean, that's that's an easy thing to throw together, but, I mean, but like I said, if you guys, like, down the road want to actually try to organize, like, a, a smaller event, because I know that, you know, for us in, in Cleveland, uh, we just had our big event two weeks ago and that was in mansfield ohio you know we had people come in from all over the country for that but we used to do a couple other smaller events throughout the year one in medina um and one in uh where's the other one we did was in uh Cortland, right before thanksgiving every year so but i mean and and both of those were always packed yeah. tons of people i mean just tons of people come to watch tons of people come to participate and we live in a in a very a dense populated area with guys with beards right. and guys in the clubs that are always looking for times to get out you know reasons to give reasons to you know do charity work or you know try to help raise money for whatever but uh, yeah, I mean that's. I think that's something that that should be a goal for you guys down the road within the next year or two. Is the even if it's just a, uh, you know, like at a place like where we're at right now, where we're sitting on a, on a little patio that has like eight tables out here. <laughs> I mean that's it's always perfect size. You know, you can always you make 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 whatever work, and it, and and of course it'll always be for some sort of good good charity or right. you know or a family or you know or whatever but dog everyone does like dog dog like canine stuff which which is really? cool yeah it seems like a lot of clubs are real heavy into doing like uh like their local dog shelters and stuff like that well could i get something off my chest about that okay go ahead our local apl animal protective league portage county yes go ahead Suck. I, they can kiss my ass. Honestly, I tried. Uh, we had the Parks and Rec here in Ravenna. They seen what we did last year. We rented a pavilion for one of our events. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, we're going to comp you guys one free one for next year. Do whatever you want." So we were throwing ideas around. So yeah. of course we had the APL brought up. So I as being the recipient. Yes. All right. So I'm thinking, call them up, see what they say. So I called them up and I talked to this lady. She was just the a worker, you know what I mean? And she was like, oh, that sounds great. And I was yeah. like, well, who do I need to talk to to get something set up? Probably the warden. Right. So she puts me in contact with some other lady first. And I talk to her. And then she gives me the email address of somebody else. And it's like this big runaround. And I was like, well, just send me, you know, what you guys need. And we can do that. Or I can just yeah. donate money. You know, give me. They have wish lists. They, she, the first lady even said we have lists of specific items we need. Yeah, I'm sure if you go online to their, their website, it'll give you a list of all the, you know, dog food, beds, blankets, you know, all the right. general stuff. So 
this lady i talked to this lady like three times and then i, I was like well get back to me and i will we'll get it rolling i'll get something set up right now like we can get this going yeah and then i would message her back again and be like hey don't forget about me she's like oh we just had this going on sorry i'll get back to you soon and they've got to the point where finally i'm like screw it and then the incident with my buddy's niece popped up and i'm like yeah. well apl can piss off for all I well can. i mean we have a lot of issues with our local uh dog warden area too i mean we we uh, yeah i i could you know there, there's stories that could go on forever about that but i mean a lot of that is just it's like county county funded stuff and they don't have sometimes they don't hire quality employees to run places like that yeah. which is kind of i mean they're there for the they're they're there for good reasons right. to be there for the animals and stuff like that and help them get adopted and and stuff like that but it's i think that in most towns or most counties like the their dog shelters are like on the bottom of funding which is very unfortunate i think everything else gets more and so they really struggle and like in your situation i just think it was it was just bad timing unfortunately but i mean like but like you said you could just probably just easily go online and see your list of things that they need and just do it anyways and then just show up there and dump it on their doorstep and be like (laughs) (laughs) right yeah you're probably right i don't know they they just rub me the wrong way no i I guess hey believe you me i've dealt with like huge corporate like charities that i've spoke with on the phone that like rub me fucking wrong man they're just fucking assholes and i'm not going to name any names of (laughs) those huge companies that are out there trying to raise money for stuff but yeah i've i've had my own share of problems in dealing with those people that you know i i get it and it's you know you you deal with it on your local level with your dog shelter and Mm. i've dealt with it on the larger level with corporations that are you know raising money for you know what would be a popular thing that everyone's raising money for or whatever, you know? So you would think that they would be a little bit more nicer or open or whatever, but they, it turns out that, you know, the, the bigger they are, the bigger assholes they are. So that's why going like the route that you guys do, or we do, or where you, where you go with a local like family or you go with a local charity or something like that, or, something small where you know that you're going to make a difference where it's just like we were saying earlier about donating your clothes. It's like, I'd rather just take my clothes to someone that I know that's going to wear them instead of dropping them off at your local goodwill or salvation army where they're going to make a buck off of it, which that money does go to help families and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, it's what we can individually do or as clubs or groups, you know, that, we've assembled because of our beards that you know where we're going to make make the biggest difference and stuff like that I got absolutely bug climbing in my arm hair right Whoa. mosquitoes are coming out i see the bats up there trying to get them bats batman i'm batman <laughs> okay so let's well let's wrap this up so we got we got the the pig roast coming up in a, in on uh, Labor Day weekend September 1st September 1st i'll put a link in the show notes and everything do you guys have a website um, we just have our Facebook website. All right. I'll put a link to that too, yeah. but I'm sure all you got to do is do a search for, what would we do a search for on Facebook? Ohio. Ohio Bearded Centers. Ohio Bearded Centers. Or BSBC Ohio. Bearded Centers Beard Club Ohio. Okay. Well, I'll put links to all that stuff in there. So if anyone listens to this and they're interested in finding out more information about the Ohio chapter or any of the other national chapters, uh, they can go there and get directed in the proper ways. I'll try to do a little bit more research online too to see if I can find more links to to other of the other clubs and stuff like that. So if you live in a different area and like you're looking for a club or you're wanting to join something, um, 
then uh, you can easily click on the links in the show notes and find out more information. But I really want to say thank you, Kenny, for taking this evening. To, it was a very lovely evening tonight. Absolutely, man. And uh, I'm so very glad that we met. I'm so very glad that we got a chance to sit down and talk. And I wish you the most success with everything you do. I hope that we can strengthen our good relationship with each other and work together in the future and because i know we have common goals and common dreams and that cosmic connection absolutely man spirit is getting on a spiritual level now man yeah spirit oof, man we're making it deep now now, <laughs> now we're gonna have to make love <laughs> get the cameras out put the <laughs> microphones away yeah that's right <laughs> but uh, i i greatly appreciate your time tonight and we shall be talking to you soon buddy thanks for coming down here man i appreciate it no problem and cut thank you once again kenny for uh meeting with me and you know sharing all the really cool information you did about the bearded centers and uh, about your gathering for the pig roast and everything on Labor Day weekend. Uh, you guys do really great things for the community, and I'm glad that we've now become friends and our lives are intertwined. So now that I can also take part in all the cool stuff you do too. And uh, thank you for everything you do. Just, it's really great. So, but uh, before we wrap up, don't forget to go to thebeardcaster.com and get all the information you're going to need about anything you want to know about me. You can get to, uh, you can listen there. You can subscribe to the podcast there. You can stream it there. Uh, all my social media is there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, you can find me there. And, uh, I guess that's about it. So don't forget to go to thebeardcaster.com slash win to enter, to win some really cool prizes. So once you enter once, you only need to do it once. And you'll always be in every drawing. So uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all so very much for supporting. Thank you for subscribing. Go out there and have a great week and enjoy the sun. Enjoy the summer. And I guess I will talk to you guys soon. So thank you very much. And I'm out of here. Ciao.